Welcome to the Birmingham Institute of Forest Research. My name is Rick Thomas and I'm going to give you a tour of this site to show you this unique and groundbreaking experiment that we are performing here. We're going to meet some of the technical and research staff who will show us some of the instruments that we use. First of all, we're going to hear from Professor Rob McKenzie, who's going to give us a little bit of a background as to what the experiment is hoping to achieve. The three-year carbon enrichment facility is an outdoor laboratory that has been dropped very carefully into an existing woodland. The centre of gravity for the Institute is based around pests and diseases and around environmental resilience, by which I mean how forested landscapes are going to respond to the push that we're giving the whole planet from putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and changing the climate of our planet. So behind me are the main CO2 storage tanks. I'm going to hand you over to Nick, who's going to explain them to you and how they work and deliver CO2 to the forest. The main storage tanks we've got here hold 120 tonnes, and it's um, stored at minus 20 degrees centigrade, uh, 20 bar pressure. We're going to take the liquid carbon dioxide, warm it up and expand it, so it then goes from liquid into gas. Comes from our liquid to gas evaporators in through uh, an electric superheater. Pressure reduced again, and we're now at 36 degrees centigrade. It then goes into our distribution system where it's distributed up to the, each of the array blocks. So now we've learned how the CO2 comes onto site, how it's stored, and how it's piped into the woods. Next thing, I've got my hard hat, I'm gonna disinfect my boots, and let's go and have a look inside the woodland about how it's distributed and piped out of the rings and into the trees. Pretty magnificent structure, right? We've got six of these in total in the forest. You see they're huge, they go right up to the top of the canopy and these are the structures that help to deliver the CO2 into the forest. This one, array number four, is the first that we come to when we're walking through the forest. But I want to take you up to number six where we've got Peter who's working up in the, in the canopy and he can explain more about the pipework system and how CO2 is brought into the forest. All right, let's, let's go. Can you explain to us about all the pipework in here and how the CO2 from those tanks we saw earlier get distributed into the rings? Yeah, for sure. So, the gas comes into the shed, mm -hmm. and there's something called a, uh, a mass control, a mass flow control valve, as it slides up and enclosed to regulate the concentration of CO2 getting out, or the rate of CO2 coming out of the shed. So that gas then enters into this plenum, the big, thick tube that you see going around, the big silver tube. That's okay. the plenum. Right. Now, in the middle, up at the top of the canopy. We have a, a, um, a control sample point, and that's constantly taking a reading yeah. of the CO2 concentration. That's feeding back to the computer and saying, I've got too much or I've got too little. So to get that gas into the middle of the array, yeah. as you can see over here, we've got all these black uh, vent stacks. Yeah, yeah. Ready? But before right. it gets up there, the gas has to pass through this blue actuator, which is at the base, if you follow the tube down to the back. Whatnot, yeah. We've got a high pressure CO2, which is at six bar, which will actuate, will open and close all those valves based on the wind direction or the wind speed. Thanks ever so much. Not That's a, a problem. really good explanation. Um, so I think now we've got a pretty clear picture of, um, of all of the sort of elements bringing the CO2 into it. So we're going to go and find out more now about the science. So I think Anna's working in... Uh, I think uh, in... Uh, is it Array 2 she's over in? Yeah. The soil so. respiration suites and right. all those different things. So we're going to go and uh, find her over there. So uh, all right. come along. So we're standing outside Array number 2 now. Um, somewhere in there is uh, Anna, our research technician, who's making some measurements. We'll go and talk to her in a second. But first, let's hear from Professor Michael Towles, 
um, about some of the key aims of the science side of this experiment. We have now old patches of intact forest ecosystem exposed to the future atmosphere. We will expect greater photosynthesis in the leaves, but then the questions arise, where does the additional sugar go? Does it go into tree growth? Will the trees grow faster? Will it create imbalances in the soil floors? Uh, will the trees become more sensitive to pests and diseases? We don't actually know what happens in a mature system. Great, so here we are in array two. You can see it's pretty busy in here. We've got lots of instruments dotted around. Got to be very careful where I put my feet. Um, and we leave things like dead wood to decay in place so we can, we can monitor that. So it's a very dynamic sort of area. And with me is our research technician, Anna, who's uh, going to explain a little bit of about some of the instruments we're using, but first hopefully tell us about this crazy looking camera that she uh, has been taking pictures with. Yep, so this is a hemispherical camera that we use to take hemispherical images or photographs of the canopy. And, and why are you interested in taking hemispherical images? Yep, so once, once a week I will go around each of the arrays and take this image in the same location yep. um, across, across the year. Um, in each of the different rings. Mm -hmm. um, so when we look at analysing this data, um, we are going to calculate the leaf area index. Okay, leaf area index, what, what does that mean? So the leaf area index is the per square metre of leaves in the canopy um, to the per square metre of the ground. Brilliant. And I know that you know a lot about the other instruments and things in here, mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to bring in the other researchers into our next um, edition of this, this video uh -huh. to, to talk about them. But can you just yeah, point out just some point of them? Out. Um, so over here we have these white chambers, uh, which are the soil respiration kit. Okay. We have this. Um, we have a couple of these in each of the array. It's a, it's a rain gauge. Right. Um, so it, it measures the rainfall. We have uh, the soil moisture probe over there. Leaf litter decomposition experiment. Okay. Behind you we have um, the leaf litter. Uh, so basically when the leaves fall, we can measure the leaf litter. Okay, in autumn. In weight and things like that, yeah, right. in autumn. Um, also we have a numerous amounts of uh, invertebrate sampling. Oh, so that, it's not a bird feeder? It's not a bird feeder, <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, it's a pan trap. Um, oh. And here, just below here, we have the soil nutrient. Um, looks at cations and anions in the soil. Um, okay. Right over there, we have uh, mini rhizotrons. So they are perspex tubes, transparent, that um, go right into the ground and have a look at the root network system. Anna, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you ever so much. I think we're going to move on now and yeah. we're going to have a look at the tower. So um, again, come along and uh, we'll see the next, next stage of the tour. Up here, we've got instruments that are measuring things on the, on the woodland scale. So that is, we can see all the trees laid out among us and we can take measurements that relate to this sort of canopy, um, to, the, to the canopy scale. So the calm dioxide instrument is over here. It also measures um, water vapour, H2O, um, and it does it in a very special way really, because it's, it measures very, very rapidly, at about uh, 20 times every second it takes a concentration measurement of carbon dioxide. By coupling that, or particularly the vertical wind component, with the car fast carbon dioxide measurement, we can look at how much carbon dioxide is being emitted or taken up by the forest. So I'd like to thank you again for coming along on this tour with us. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. We intend to update our content pretty soon, so do come back and have a look. And, and of course, like and share if you enjoyed this video. And we very much hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.